So my name is, is Stephen, and I'll talk for 10 minutes about uh, canopy. So we work in Indonesia. And lots of exciting things I could talk all day about it, but uh, I'll try and keep it tech focused and talk mostly about the, um, the tools and features that we've built on top of Mephos. So those of you that are working on Mephos, I hope it's interesting, you can see how how other people are using it and for other people like me, you know, lots of other ideas that you can build and introduce also. Uh, so a little bit about me first. My name is Stephen. Um, I started Canopy about a year ago with my wife. Academically, I'm a telecommunications engineer, uh, also with a degree in finance. I was a management consultant professionally, although technically I still am. I'm on, I'm on leave from, from the Canadian company. Uh, and I've lived in Indonesia over my life for over seven years, but I've only been there for one year the last year. All right. Now that we're talking about kind of being Indonesia. So Indonesia, mostly majority Muslim country, uh, 250 million people. So it's about the size of Germany, France, UK, and Spain, all put together, big country. And most of those people live in, in the small island of Java. Uh, and it was all a Dutch colony until about 1943. So very appropriate visiting the mother country. <laughs> And financial inclusion is very poor. So only, according to the World Bank, it's only about 37% of people have an account with a, a, a formal financial institution. And so there's about 100 million people, 100 million Indonesian adults, without a formal savings account. And for uh, my wife and I, Steph, our big mission when we set up Canopy was to provide the best savings accounts for Indonesians. That's that was our motivation. We didn't know how we'd do it. We didn't know uh, what sort of form it would look like, but we just wanted to make to help people save save money. Um, like our own our own stuff that worked in Indonesia, we knew that you know they had plenty of access to credit. They're all borrowing money, but very few people were saving money. And we're trying to understand the reasons of uh, why people are saving money. And, and it turned out that the product doesn't exist. Like a really good savings product doesn't exist. And it doesn't exist because it's so expensive to operate. So our whole philosophy from the start has been, what is the most low-cost savings product that we can offer? Uh, and it meant that we couldn't have paper. Okay, so it can't be paper, so it needs to be a tech-based solution. Uh, we can't build everything from scratch, so let's let's use Mipos. And that's where that, that first step took came in. Then we looked at all the different software providers, decided that Mipos was the best. We realized there was a few, few modules missing, and then so we built those, built those ourselves. And I'd like to step through uh, three of them, three little features that we've built. Uh, the first one is about prize link savings. The second one's about social media notification. And the most interesting part that we've built is around some very cool biometric authentication. So before I get into that, let me explain how we've set up um, our organization. We, we're an IT partner. We work with uh, local credit-led institutions that don't have a strong savings out, and we offer a savings arm. So we put, we're, for our pilot case, we put a, our staff out there in the field that they collect, collect deposits. And then manage it all through, through an Android application. And price link savings, so our, our accounts are all free for our customers. And price link savings, it's, has anyone heard of it? It's, it's popular in the US and the Midwest, uh, some of the poorer regions where it, it brings in this uh, idea of Sort of gambling or the lottery into savings accounts. So if you deposit money, instead of getting interest, you earn, we call them seeds or, or tickets. And then at the end of the month, we pick one, one seed, and that person wins a prize. So for us, we've given away fans and cooking oil and, and rice and DVD players and but little things that make it more exciting than receiving 30 cents of interest. So instead, Everyone puts all the interest together and it goes to one person. Uh, and so here's, here's our, our very first winner. We gave her a, uh, a fan. And the, just a little bit of how we, how we did that. So we used, we used web books. Uh, we set up a few, few data tables that, that Marcus talked about. And uh, we run a Python service, service that uh, sort of calculates all that. I'm just going to go through this. If you have any questions at the end, um, 
Uh, and then, yeah, so another load cost part for us meant that we couldn't um, print off receipts, we couldn't have passbooks, those were all too expensive, so we decided to let our customers know about all their transactions and everything digitally. Um, and so if a customer had a Facebook account or a Twitter account or a Lime's quite popular in Indonesia, then we would give um, notifications over that. And again, we built all that, again, using webhooks, some data tables, some Python scripts, and for SMS, we're using a, a Nexmo SMS gateway. Uh, unfortunately, none of our customers had Facebook or Twitter online, so it's, it's all gone back to SMS, and then they change numbers every month because a different telco comes out with a different deal and gives them free credit. So, so it was a beautiful idea in practice when we built it, but it hasn't, hasn't been useful at all for us. Uh, but this has, and this is what we've spent most of our, our time and effort on, and uh, what we're most proud of. Uh, so, our customers don't need any pins, they don't need any account numbers, they don't even need to know their own mobile number when they come and make a transaction. Uh, they meet one of our savings offices, field offices, and they I'll show anyone later up close how this all works. But our, our staff works in the field with um, a Android phone, so this is about 70 euro, and another 70 euro optical scanner, and, and this is all, all that they need to be able to conduct transactions. So the staff will meet, meet, any, staff, uh, meet any customers, they will say, please make a deposit, deposit, enter how much you'd like to save, Scan your thumb on here. It comes up with the image, and we check that against our, our central server, so we keep all the, the identities uh, centralized. And it sends a 20, 20 kilobyte message to, to the server. So it's, it's quite small, uh, it works nearly anywhere. There's a WhatsApp that we're able to make this work. And, um, and then we get the customer details and we can make, make the transactions like that. And the way that we've built this, so we've got our own, it's an off-the-shelf uh, scanner, but then we use, uh, we've built our own drivers to make it all work with Android. It's mostly built for the PCs, but it works well in Android. Uh, we've got our own, our own, um, Back then, it's running another piece of open source software, Source Aphis, that runs the, the technology fingerprint matching as well. And then we've connected the, the two systems in the back end so that Microsoft works with it. And, and in none of this, all these examples here, uh, we haven't touched the, the Mifos core. So that's, that's our philosophy that the guys here that work on that, you know that better than we do. We're not very good Java programmers, so, so we don't touch that, and we're building all of this on top. Uh, so we launched, we launched that in November, and it, it worked really well. We didn't do any marketing in, uh, of this product. We set it up in, in the middle of Jakarta. Um, within about six weeks, we had 50 customers sign up for the savings account. And it was a little bit short of what we, what we were hoping for, but the amounts saved were, were much more than what we were hoping for. So these are people that have never had a bank account before. And by the six months, the average account balance is 500,000 rupee, which is about 35 euro. So it's not, not a lot of money, but it's enough that um, the cooperatives that we work with, that's it's decent money for them. So uh, just an extra bit of background, they, they borrow money from banks at approximately 15% per annum, so the cost of money is quite high. Uh, so anything that reduces that, and then customer deposits is, is one version that helps them a lot. And so we are able to help them build up that, um, their, their liabilities at, at a much lower cost than going to the bank. So that's us. So thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, happy to answer quickly now or we'll talk about more. So see, the, the co ops are um, licensed to be deposit accepting institutions. They are. Okay. Yes. Not yes. an issue at all. Not an issue. Uh, they don't at the moment because of the possibility of fraud. It's too, it's too difficult um, to have a field-based savings product mm -hmm. unless it's a, um, a mandatory amount. So I will come and collect 20 cents off everyone each, each week. Mm -hmm. 
that they can run. But if they have a voluntary savings account, they're sending field offices without some sort of um, Android app and centralized data that everyone, full data transparency, mm -hmm. then the risk of your staff taking money is too high. And the fingerprints taken as part of account opening? Or yep, yep, and we do all that on the phone too, so that's all in, in the village. And this is this is what a typical transaction looks like. It's it's not at all what people expect of, of banking. It's really brainless banking. Like it's in the floor of this guy's shop. This is this this lady Mulan works for us. You know, he's on the phone. It's very casual. This guy would have had to dress up, go for an hour into into town to, to do a transaction, and we're really changing the time. And it works well. Here's another example just on the side of the street where two two guys are making a transaction. So. So they get a receipt back on SMS? On SMS, yes. Saying you have deposited 20,000, your balance is now 150, thank you. Yes. And, go ahead. Um, you said 200 kilobyte message. 20, yep. 20? Yep. So is that because you're able to, to take the biometric and reduce it down to some compressed? Uh, uh, that's what we're planning to do next, um, but the 20 kilobytes, that's, that's an optical image, just a compressed optical image. It has enough data, has enough biometric data. Oh, even at 20? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I have one more question. Sorry. Uh, have you thought about additional form factors for verification? Uh, like two factor SMS or something? Well, you know, something you are, something you have, something you know. So we've we've done this mostly as a ease of use for our customers. We find this is by far the easiest. They don't need to remember anything. Um, we have avoided things as much as possible. Um, and so no, this is, this is all we, we use. Uh, we because they're small local communities, and we do take the ID of customers. Uh, we do have. Like pictures of ID, so when someone does scan the, the phone, which should we, we did have the, the customer's ID coming out, the photo of them, uh, but that was not worth the data traffic for us, yeah. mm -hmm. so we, we took that off. Um, but we did have that. But because <coughs> small local communities, this lady lives in the same community as the customer, okay. so she knows them also. So, this is how you build the trust um, is that the agent? Um, Working is part of the community because yes. I understand that trust is must be a big issue when, when it comes to those people. How do very, they feel about just giving their, their their fingerprint and their money, their life savings or whatever? It's, um, Fing fingerprints are fine. People don't care about that. But yeah, giving the money definitely. Like you can see, we had a good first week, and then there was news about an Indonesian scam where a guy had sent uh, SMSs it's to very vulnerable. to a thousand people saying. Mum's asking for phone credit, send it to me. Yeah. And then here we are turning up being a financial institution doing all that transactions over SMS. But it was actually the SMS part that people didn't feel very comfortable with. They wanted printed receipts. And so for a while we were just stamping pieces of paper with a two dollar stamp and people were happy with that. But um, we're we've weaned off that and saying, no, this is all you get. And, and yeah, for a while no one was signing up, it was very disheartening. That there was no trust, but then as we give those prizes out to the community, people are withdrawing their money. During this pilot, we had 136 deposits and no one asked for their money back. So people were, were trusting the system and trusting the people from their, from their community. Um, but it has been very difficult to establish, establish that trust, especially because we're doing it under our own brand in this pilot, not our, not our partner brand. Um, but yeah, trying to get people to withdraw has been the best thing that we have been able to do for to build trust because people realize that we aren't charging fees and they do have access to their money. And, and how would the withdrawal be done? Do this the same agents? Same, same, uh, agent, same, same agent. procedure as the, well? The only thing that we get, we ask for is a two-day notice. So if you'd like to withdraw money today uh, on Friday, we need to come today right. and yeah, say, so that you can manage the cash. And yeah, so we will have 100% availability, but it's not the most convenient, it's not the most time. We've decided that we prefer you having money when you want it. Okay. And how do you manage your agents, those people? Do you score them? Do you, um, do you yep. register so them? They, uh, we give them a salary, class salary, no commission base, mm -hmm. uh, which was has been very, very good for us because. 
they're motivated for the same reasons that we're motivated. They want to help their community, and it's not about <coughs> the transaction. And they're not trying to cheat us. So we do a flat salary. Uh, we have daily check-ins at nine o'clock that we do on Slack. So we automatically generate graphs from from Mipos data, which collect all that, and we put that straight into a, a, a very nice graph. That we can all talk about that at nine o'clock each morning and talk about uh, what works well, what are the problems, what do we need to fix. And um, I think the, the biggest part for us is that they're making sure that they feel like they run their <coughs> their communities. Yeah, that they they're responsible for their for their customers. Stephen, is there any thought that if someone never wins, they'll get tired of seeing us? If no one ever wins? Yeah, I mean, if, like, like I never win a prize. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, we we keep them small prizes in small communities. So, that, yeah. for example, it would be approximately one person out of this room would win mm -hmm. each month. So you, you hear about these these communities. People talk. They don't have Facebook, so they're all talking. Yeah. Um, so they they hear about. They know about. Now, unfortunately. Um, some of the people save a lot more money than the others, so their chance of winning is a lot higher. Mm. And and there can be a bit of animosity felt that you know they already have money, they don't need these prizes and, and we're struggling and we're not. But but from what we're seeing it's exciting. People we thought it would be the biggest attraction. We when we designed our whole product, we thought everyone's gonna sign up because they want to get a free DVD player. It's gonna we're gonna have hundreds of people signing up. Uh, but the biggest factor for us was that we don't charge fees. We thought it was all going to be about the prizes, but it ended up being about the fees. Mm. In Indonesia, uh, as, you, as you all know, it's very hard to make money in, in, in micro savings. And the way, an easy way to do it is have a transaction fee base, because you, you match your cost base with, with your revenue. And we want to move away from that, because that penalizes the most, the most poor people and people with the lower balances. So we want to make money purely on the float. And the only way that we can see is, is to raise the float, and the only way to get people more saving more in a formal financial system is if it's, if it's free. Like we've got to stop penalizing people. So our, our competitors there, e-money service providers, they will charge 30 cents for a withdrawal made at a convenience store. That's not much if you're taking out $100, but if you're taking out $5, that's a 6% transaction cost. And, and these guys that don't have much money are acutely aware of all these costs that are involved everywhere. So as soon as they know that we really don't charge fees, that's that's where they're, they're signing up. And it's it's very unbelievable for them that we don't charge fees. And that's where we trust comes in. We need to show that you can withdraw your money for free. That's the biggest part of trying to convince people.